This is every little thing we did on our homestead in 2023 and the big impact they made. The focus was to establish order. From the wooded acreage to the animals we brought in and sent off, even on our own home, Brothertons went to work on making our seven acres in Central Texas work better together. Welcome to our 2023 recap. Although I am sporting my best Phoebe Buffet, smelly cat voice here, I think you're gonna love what we've done in 2023 and see where we're headed with all the work that's been accomplished. Oh my God. In January, we sold our very first cows at an auction and we learned a lot about cattle prices. At the very least, I can say we were awash on the sales. We had these calves as a calf share, so we could take breaks from milking, but still keep our cow healthy and producing. Did we get rich? Not so much. But we did get a lot of poop. At the nursery, a 50 pound bag of this stuff is worth its weight. Now, with a rotation of cows, we've been able to muck and make much of it. We produce somewhere between 15 to 20,000 pounds of compost with the cows and the pigs manure this year. This little nugget learned to walk in January. I know, how did she do it so quickly? Born into farm life, she has the sweetest onlookers as she hit all her milestones. Bo and I sifted through so much footage and the theme that rose up over and over was family and a side of lattes. Through the gift of togetherness on the farm and God's kindness this year, we really spent so much life together that it was impossible not to hear the voices of our children as we wrangled calves in at night and worked project after project, month after month. Togetherness is rarely tested as strongly as in adversity. And man, was February adverse. A winter storm blew through the lower part of the country and all of Texas suffered. We are built for hurricanes and tornadoes, not so much icy rain and sleet. If manure piles weren't enough, we set some stuff on fire and then we used the coals to add to the garden with plans of a huge harvest. We wanted to grow enough to feed our family and take a big chunk out of our feed bills for the animals. Oh, the cows, <laughs> if there was ever a thing that depended on us learning something new every single day of 2023, it was these cows. God love them. We expected Goldie to calf early in the year, but when her AI failed, we tried again and our heifer yearling was old enough to get pregnant as well. And pregnant they became. That pregnant heifer became our biggest single sale on the farm this past year when Buttercup went off to her new home. She was A2A2, a full-bred jersey with papers, and pregnant. We need a mild-mannered cow here with all these kids around. So for the price of $2,200, off she went. We live in one of those weird places. You know when you can experience all the seasons in a week? <laughs> we had a burst of early spring, and the pond was finally full. So we ran to the pond on a random Tuesday afternoon just because. This is the sweetest kind of thing I know about living this way. I feel like this was the year of the pigs. Our Idaho pastured pigs have been such a gentle learning curve for us and a really great experience in animal husbandry. But to make room for some new things we want to do this year, we'll take a break from breeding so that we can manage all those working projects. We built all the shelters with repurposed materials from around the farm. And the boys helped with every little bit of land clearing, every tea post, every electric line. Our kids take on so much care over our animals. It's amazing to see. Feeding and keeping them watered and in wallows, this breed has been even tempered and manageable with our older kids. I mean, moving them from paddock to paddock is less stress and much more of a sitcom. Yeah, pick, pick. Okay, now, now go get mom. Here, pick, pick. Okay, all I got here, pick, 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 pick. Here, pick, 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 pick. Here, pick, 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 pick. No, no, guys. Here, pick, 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 pick. Oh, I get the camera. Here, pick, 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 pick. Good girls. Good job. Here. Here, pick, pick, pick. Oh, watch out, Finley. Finley, watch out. Finley, here. The lovebirds Finley. settled into their new home quickly. And in a few months, Missy would bring more piglets to our farm. Oh, 
I'm always torn between spring and winter as my favorite seasons. But you can't beat the sweet invitation to just be alive from every budding tree and bright wildflower. I'm crazy for the crisp days where we walk by the pond to see what animals left their tracks overnight, and the calves were always just steps behind us. These calves kept Goldie healthy and in milk whenever we wanted to take a day off. And in the meantime, we had plenty to filter and turn into milk and cheese and lattes. If I were to estimate just how many lattes we made in the year of our Lord, 2023, I don't know if I should be more proud or ashamed to tell you that we averaged three a day between Bo and I for a total of almost 1,100 lattes. God love a garden. Ours started out with a bang. We had rain all the way through May. So this was a fantastic year to grow fodder for our animals in the garden. And it proved to be so low maintenance, a supplemental feed. We had hybrid poplar, hybrid willow, and white mulberries. They proved to be our favorite. These leaves helped us cut our feed costs dramatically, especially as later in the summer, our grasses would be nearly non-existent. All hands on deck for this awkward part of any animal video. But these guys were never gonna be bred, so banding was called for. We waited a little bit longer to service these guys so they'd get a bit bigger, and we were growing them out for beef. So we managed to try a new method in the shoot, and it went about as smoothly as any banding can go. It's also the perfect time to make some more biochar. We took a bunch of the broken trees from the ice storm and we let it burn. Anyone else love to set things on fire as much as me? Bo took the reins on this while I was in with the baby, turning this problem into a solution. We've got a lot of growing to do around here. When I tell you the pond looked like a crag in the earth for ages, I really do mean it. But lo and behold, she filled up. I'm so excited we got this chance to enjoy the pond this year. It's clear that this is gonna be one of those ongoing projects that we give a little to each season. And in this season, we focused on fish. Bluegill and minnows are helping to keep the pond clean. And over time, we expect to see so many animal species stopping by this pond, establishing an entire new ecosystem here. Did you see the pop of color around the pond? This is something I will never get over about being a Texan. Spring shows off in purples and electric reds, and then bright green and yellows, and each week is like a new painting. There he goes. The pond wasn't the only thing getting big. Goldie was officially pregnant and due early fall, so we watched this mama really start to show in early May. May also wrapped up a bunch of activities for us, our first school dance was a hit, and if you've never done folk dancing with a group of families, I'm gonna suggest you add that to your 2024 list right now. Summer hit us hard with the heat, and we had a chance to take a little family field trip to our favorite shed to house builder, United Portable Buildings. And I feel like I'm being punked. Walking into this shed to house build with a baby on my hip was like a time machine. One of you lovely people saw our shed and modified the layout to fit your very own family. It sent me reminiscing and so grateful for how far we've come. Looking at the pond depth here, I can see hints of what was headed for us. This would cause us to entirely pivot everything in our efforts on this farm in a major way. This was our first 100 degree day. This turned out to be one of over a hundred triple digit days that summer. Yeah, that's a lot even for Texas. So we didn't miss a moment at the pond. The ecosystem I mentioned did its thing and soon we saw herring and even turtles. The turtles were not invited. Our weirdest find was definitely those leeches. Look away if you're squeamish. Oh my God. You won't be getting in that pond, girl. What do you... I never thought of that. Second weirdest thing in May was Goldie's milk. Something challenging about owning a milk cow is not knowing others nearby who have that experience. Like, you want the guru, you want the mentor, someone who can come and put hands on your cow and tell you what they've known from ages past, right? That's a dream world for us. So it was a really hard thing to figure out why Goldie's milk was turning so quickly after we milked her. 
Not sour, not rotten, it was like it wanted to be cheese so badly. So our best conclusion is that at this point, she is late in lactation, she's pregnant almost halfway through, and nursing two cows. So her body was doing a lot, and to prioritize that little baby growing, it was basically telling us, screaming at us, dry me off. So we use this product from Synergy. This is not in any way sponsored, but if you're caring for a dairy cow, I have to encourage you to connect with this company. They were the mentorship that we needed. Very brief, over the phone each time we called, they offered so much experience and encouragement every time we spoke. Soon after we dried Goldie off, her coat began to look golden again, and her energy perked up, her eyes were bright, her condition looked fantastic, so we knew we'd done the right thing. Goldie. By now, you know how I feel about babies on the farm. Knowing that the summer was coming in hot quite literally, we brought the pigs closer to our house. Missy got a new apartment, and pretty soon, five tiny little squeaky, wiggly babies were right outside the door. Everyone came to say hello and check on them. This moment is etched in my brain. It's like a scene from Charlotte's Web. We celebrated a lot of things that month. The girls finished a season of tumbling and even Georgia couldn't stand still. They tried their hand at Wonka Land in their very first theater camp and since Bo and I met as theater majors in college, a little bit of info you might not know, this was such a sweet moment for us. Knee deep in our hottest summer on record, we weren't rolling in garden harvest or relaxing in lush grasses. By this point in the summer, we hadn't had rain in over a month. So the pond is becoming more and more shallow and everyone is looking for a way to cool off. Bless this sweet mama's heart. <laughs> I have been pregnant in the summer, but I have never been a thousand pounds pregnant in the summer. At one point, we put frozen gallon jugs in the water trough just to give her a break. Around midday, we made a routine where Goldie came in for a spa spritz. Y'all, I really don't know how she did it. I don't know how anything survived this summer. July brought another string of temperatures of above 105, and our poor land was feeling it with every scorched blade of grass and every single deep crack. So we decided to do something about it. We weren't getting any cooler, and Goldie wasn't needing less time in the pasture, and our property wasn't needing less rotational grazing. So we did a really hard thing. Bo went back to our original plan of running a water line to the back pasture of our property. It looks like this. This is an enormous effort. The hottest day of this project was 112 degrees. We rented the trencher for just 48 hours and Bo squeezed out every single penny of that thing. Over 800 feet of digging from dawn to midday and back again as soon as it dipped under 99 degrees. He trenched more than three football fields end to end. I kept him going with adrenal cocktails and pickle breaks and he wore this. Mmm, mmm. Just getting through the sand and densely packed clay was a feat of itself, but necessary as we needed to run our water line. This is a solution we laid for many summers to come in order to irrigate this thirsty part of the land and make way for native grasses and root systems and healthy topsoil. These are those permaculture principles that we're trying to establish between animals and land. Bo and the boys worked so diligently on the plumbing and the water actually ran. It's a good thing too, because without rain since May, late July looked like this. There is no shame in our game. We motivated these boys with staying up late and a trip to the movies. I have never seen them so proud to complete a job. Homesteading with kids is the best. They're so enthusiastic, they're motivated, they bring life to the project, and I can't say enough good things about the time that we've spent together. You might be wondering how this all fits together. And in a perfect world, it looks like this. There's a long fence that we installed. It'll split down our back pasture. And then these horizontal fencing are temporary so that we can rotate the cows. They just open and close like a gate. The cows will poop, then they move on, and the poop help grows grass. It's part of the reason that the irrigation can help us if we want to run a sprinkler in the times where we don't have rain. And then by the time we get through each paddock, and come back to paddock number one. They'll have fresh grass and they're gonna do it all over again. It's a good thing we got this in because the pond that catches rainwater running off is amazing, if you get rain. No way.
Finally, in August, the skies open up. Nobody is happier than a Texas homesteader when the first drops fall after four long months of dry, heat-scorched earth and animals on the brink. There is no way that you were going to catch us hiding inside during this. This is the good stuff right here. Just a few weeks later, we had a birthday to celebrate. Goldie calved mid-September, and this gorgeous little Jersey girl made us her home. We've had a lot of calves on this farm, and I have never seen Goldie care for a baby the way she took to pumpkin. So quickly, she stood for her as she nursed, grooming her, tending to her. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure we found them just 15 minutes, or maybe 20 after she arrived. And then all of us just sat watching them together, gushing over every moment, and being totally grossed out when we watched her chomp on the placenta. This was new life, and we were in awe. We planned to renovate our garden in the spring, and then the fall came. And before I knew it, we were heading for the end of the year. So fall became the groundwork for this 2,000-foot garden renovation. We're going to fill it up and plant in the spring of this year, a whole year after we first began. There must have been some other things that happened in October, but honestly, the details get hazy because October is when pumpkin came down with pneumonia. I know, big curve in the story. It's likely that our temperature swings that we had in October, going from 30 degrees in one direction, back again within a few days, that this could have been what brought on her illness. It could have been lack of nutrients. But either way, Pumpkin got sick, and she never really recovered. Our goal with calf sharing is to keep Goldie healthy, to keep her milked out, and still give us the opportunity to have milk for our family. We don't need a huge abundance. So we brought on a second nurse calf to help us keep up with all the milk. It was certainly provision because soon we ended up with only this new calf. In our last video, I shared the story of pumpkin and to be honest, I'd just rather not rehash it. If you haven't seen that video, but you're curious, then you've got the link right here. Be careful though, I'd watch it with a box of tissues. Awkward transition. Our Christmas decorations came out and I'm sure we forgot a box somewhere because in the blur of this toddler and homeschooling and animals, somehow all we got up were a tree and stockings. Wrapping it all up, December left no stone unturned. The irrigation project finally concluded with our timeless fence install. This went up so quickly and it means that all we have left to do is create the paddocks. We're gonna seed them and water them and our pastures are gonna be in business. I loved this month. We had dates with the kids finishing up their term work. There were new baby ducklings and a partnership with Grebley Farms. These ducklings were already a billion percent better than our first round of ducks. And if you've been here a while, you know, that first round was runner ducks and they were the living worst. They ran away from everything. Like, I feel like we should have known that from the name, but somehow we just glossed over it. After our hearts breaking in November, these ducklings have been a sweet addition that our farm needed. We wrapped up school projects with our co-op and even got away for Christmas with our family. I remember saying that I never want to be found in the gray days of winter, wishing for the warmth of summer. So I wrote the blog for Pumpkin's story and it was grueling to think about how hard it was to let her go. But the farm still had to keep working, even in the wake, and we still had to live life. So we scrubbed everything down that Pumpkin had been using. We cleaned out the stall and we got Goldie another calf to love. Here's her best pal, Bibi. The hard pivot I mentioned, where we're changing the entire trajectory of our farm, is actually just coming back 
to our original blueprint. When we bought this seven acres, we knew it was gonna need a lot of love. So we're putting all our eggs into drought proofing this property. Over the next few months, you're gonna see us applying more permaculture principles with our animals, our pastures, our pond, our rainwater harvesting. This is gonna to touch all aspects of our homestead, including what we grow in the garden. Anyone else resisting the urge to buy all their seeds this winter and it's not even halfway over? We've got spring on our minds. I am so excited to share this next year with you. Thank you for being with us. We're gonna make 2024 better together. We spent years watching accomplished homesteaders grow their gardens and raise animals, living the dream right in front of us. But the question, how, stuck in our minds. How could we possibly leave our suburban life and go from dreaming to doing? If you're like us and that question keeps you up at night, we're going to help you get your mind and your action plan in order. The Get Off Your Tail Homestead ebook and companion workbook is on sale for 40% off right now. We wrote this book from our little backyard garden in the suburbs where we skilled up growing food and raising rabbits and learning to build stuff. And now we're on seven acres building a homestead from scratch using this exact outline from the guide. How do I create income so I can work from my homestead and quit the rat race? Where do I even start to go from city to country living? And even the big questions like how do I actually buy land? Homesteading should be accessible to more people so there's no gatekeeping here. 2024 is the year to get off your tail and homestead. So follow the link in the description to take action steps that will launch you from where you are to where you want to be. This sale is ending at the end of January. So if you need to get off your tail and homestead already, follow the link for 40% off.